Dear readers, welcome to our channel. Cars need to refuel at gas stations, and even fighter jets can recharge in the sky. But what about satellites? Just like any mechanical device, satellites have a lifespan, often determined by their fuel. Despite being equipped with solar panels, satellites need fuel to maintain their orbit, correct errors, adjust their orientation, and handle emergency maneuvers. So, what happens when a satellite runs out of fuel? Typically, satellites carry fuel accounting for more than 50% of their total weight, sufficient for maintaining orbit for over a decade. However, as fuel is gradually depleted, once it runs out, the satellite can no longer function in orbit. With a decrease in orbital altitude, satellites may re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and burn up, signaling the end of their lifespan. Satellites are costly, and although advancements in technology have improved satellite components and performance, they are often abandoned due to fuel depletion, leading to wastage. Thus, if we could refuel satellites in space, their lifespan would significantly increase. Is China, alongside the United States and Russia, also a pioneer in this technology? China Aerospace Science and Technology Group's 8th Academy independently developed a refueling spacecraft, a true space mobile gas station capable of carrying 1.3 tons of fuel, constituting 52% of its own weight. Adding 50 kilograms of fuel to a satellite can extend its lifespan by a year, reducing costs by 35% compared to launching a new satellite. This space refueling satellite not only supplies fuel to multiple satellites, extending their operational lifespan, but also effectively reduces overall costs. How does it achieve space refueling? Equipped with a navigation system comprising radar and cameras at the front end, the spacecraft reaches the specified satellite's rear guided by the ground dispatch system. Through the navigation system and coordinated mechanical arm, it precisely docks and refuels the satellite. In 2017, when the Tianzhou-1 cargo spacecraft successfully docked with the Tiangong-2 space lab, China conducted its first on-orbit refueling test, signifying a breakthrough in in-orbit space refueling technology and making it the third country, after the United States and Russia, to master this technology. Satellite lifespan primarily depends on fuel. Approximately 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's equator, there is a unique satellite orbit. Satellites orbiting in this path complete one orbit every 24 hours, synchronizing with the Earth's rotation. This orbit is known as the geostationary orbit, and satellites operating here are called geostationary satellites. This geostationary orbit hosts various satellite types, including communication satellites, navigation satellites, meteorological satellites, missile warning satellites, electronic reconnaissance satellites, and remote sensing satellites. It is crucial for both civilian and defense purposes. However, this orbit is exceptionally crowded. Due to antenna reception limitations, satellites in geostationary orbit, sharing the same frequency band and coverage area or partially overlapping, must maintain a certain separation, measured as a specific angle when observed from the ground. Generally, the longitude gap between two medium-capacity satellites is no less than 2 degrees. If one satellite is placed every 2 degrees, a maximum of 180 satellites can be accommodated in a full 360-degree orbit, making resources limited. Although techniques like orbital collocation and using different communication frequencies for adjacent satellites have increased the number of satellites in orbit, the situation remains tense. Orbital collocation technology is currently mastered by only a few countries, including the United States, China, Germany, and Japan. To avoid disputes and satellite collisions, the International Telecommunication Union, a United Nations agency, is dedicated to managing this matter. It oversees planning and coordination of communication frequencies, orbit positions, and other aspects of each satellite in geostationary orbit. In addition to the shortage of orbital resources, the cost of geostationary satellites is also extremely high, often reaching several billion Chinese yuan. Strictly speaking, satellites operating in geostationary orbit are not entirely stationary, 
they experience the influence of Earth's gravity and gradually drift away from their original orbits due to the gravitational effects of the Moon and the Sun. Although satellites are equipped with solar panel batteries, long-term operation in orbit requires fuel consumption for orbital maintenance, error correction, attitude adjustment, and emergency maneuvers. Satellites typically carry fuel needed for a lifespan of over a decade upon launch. However, once in space, fuel consumption decreases over time, and when the fuel is exhausted, the satellite's lifespan ends. Therefore, the reserve of fuel directly determines a satellite's operational lifespan. For example, in a 5.5-ton geostationary satellite, the weight of the fuel alone accounts for more than half of the total weight. As technology continuously matures, the reliability and performance of satellite components have reached a high level. However, fuel remains a critical bottleneck affecting satellite service life. When fuel is depleted, satellites cannot continue their on-orbit operations. Lowering orbital altitude causes satellites to gradually re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, leading to their destruction. Some satellites, despite having intact performance and components, are retired only because they cannot maintain their orbital altitude and are reluctantly abandoned by the ground control center. Currently, most retired satellites end service prematurely due to insufficient fuel reserves. Therefore, breakthroughs in fuel replenishment technology will significantly extend satellite operational life, providing reliable energy support for long-term satellite operations in orbit. China's independently designed on-orbit refueling spacecraft is equipped with a navigation system consisting of radar and cameras, providing it with advanced autopilot capabilities. Upon receiving a distress signal from a satellite facing fuel shortages, the spacecraft swiftly flies to the rear of the satellite under the guidance of the ground dispatch system, autonomously tracking and approaching the satellite using the navigation system. When it reaches a distance of about 2 meters, with the coordinated operation of the mechanical arm, it successfully connects tightly to the refueling port of the satellite, transferring fuel to the satellite. To facilitate the refueling of multiple fuel types, the new docking mechanism needs to achieve high-precision docking with the satellite. In 2017, when China's Tianzhou-1 cargo spacecraft successfully docked with the Tiangong-2 space lab, it completed the on-orbit refueling test for propellants for the first time, marking China's successful breakthrough in on-orbit space refueling technology and making it the third country globally, following the United States and Russia to independently master this technology. Due to the vast potential of space refueling technology, multiple spacefaring nations or major powers are actively developing this technology. In February 2020, the United States successfully completed its first space refueling mission. The Mission Extension Vehicle 1, MEV-1, developed by Northrop Grumman successfully docked with the IS-901 satellite, transferring fuel to its fuel tank and extending its lifespan by an additional five years. After five years, MEV-1 will tow the IS-901 satellite to a graveyard orbit, causing it to retire at the age of 24. By then, MEV-1 will provide similar lifespan extension tasks for its new client satellites. This commercial satellite rendezvous and docking was the first in human history, marking a significant step forward in on-orbit service technology. With the continued design lifespan of MEV-1, it is expected to provide life extension services for three high-orbit satellites. Launched on October 9, 2019, by a Russian Proton rocket, the two-ton MEV-1 carried a European communication satellite. With around one ton of fuel on board, calculations indicate that supplying 60 kilograms of fuel to a satellite in geostationary orbit can extend its lifespan by one year. Therefore, the fuel carried by MEV-1 is sufficient to extend the working life of three GEO satellites running out of propellant by five years each, and MEV-1 itself, as a refueling satellite, also has a high lifespan with a design life of at least 15 years. The successful commercial rendezvous and docking of MEV-1 with the IS-901 satellite has saved international communications satellite companies significant expenses in replacing old satellites and network expansion injecting positive prospects into the future of on-orbit services. 
In the United States, Elon Musk is about to demonstrate unprecedented in-space refueling technology in the third Starship launch. According to a report from Financial Associated Press, a lesser official revealed that the third Starship test flight will include a crucial technology test, which is the ability of Starship to transfer fuel in space. This innovative technology will bring about a substantial disruptive impact in the field of aerospace, representing another milestone after rocket recovery. In conclusion, let's sum up what we've learned today. In the exciting field of space refueling, we witness continuous technological breakthroughs breathing new life into satellites. This not only reduces satellite maintenance costs but also opens up new possibilities for sustainable satellite operations in orbit. By studying this innovation, we deeply understand that fuel is the bottleneck for satellite operations, and space refueling technology is an effective solution to face the future. Do we also encounter similar fuel problems in our daily lives, hindering the development and continuity of things? When faced with challenges, can we find innovative solutions to ensure sustainable development? Let's think together, explore more possibilities brought by technology. Are there more technological breakthroughs that excite you in the future? How do you think technology will change our lives? Stay tuned for the next discussion. That's all for today's video. Look forward to the next exciting content. Goodbye. Bye.